hello everyone and welcome to another video so this is going to be a video describing how to implement the classification solution in the previous video I've already covered the basics of predictive intelligence uh, but we didn't talk about uh, implementing one so yeah let's let's uh, start with it as you can see I clicked on the home page and I see all the different four types of uh, predictive intelligence solutions that service now has to offer as you see right now it's loading uh, it seems like there are already five solutions that are already present I can click on them and see what uh, their status is like or I can go and create a solution definition so from here you already see that I have uh, a couple of solution definitions for my classification solution and a solution definition is just what what are we trying to uh, configure as a use case in order for me to create a new solution definition i will click on the new button now before we even try to create a classification model we just want to understand what we are trying to achieve what we are trying to automate what we are trying to predict what kind of inputs we will have right what kind of output we are expecting and uh, so yeah uh, when we are thinking in those terms we would want to make sure that we have the right data we have a clean data we have a relevant data we have a reliable data right so uh, before we actually get into creating a solution definition think about uh, what you want to predict what kind of data do you have do you have relevant data or not and yeah then things would uh, look easy on here okay so for this one my use case is going to be uh, that I want to uh, predict an assignment group based on my configuration and short description combination right you can you can choose to uh, predict category or subcategory based on short description or color whatever but I think uh, th th this is a, a use case that we will try to build a solution for right so I can give it any name and the name will be
to something that's relevant to our use case. Processing language is English. Stop words is default. Stop words are words that have to be skipped that we do not need training on. Training frequency, we have uh, 30, 60, 90. I would just choose once because building uh, these model, these definitions, it's an iterative process. You may not get a final result the first time. It may require fine tuning, uh, looking at the, an analyzing your result, making sure that you've chosen the right filter or word corpus, and then you can start to build uh, your, then you can start to use your training frequency because the training frequency will run the same model over and over again. So you would want to make sure you're working with a workable configuration. And from there, you would want it to um, put into a learning cycle. So for now, run once, I will save it. I can save and save and train. Save and train would do training at the same time, but we'll just save it for now. And from here, I will click update and train. So I opened the same record again. And from a service now principle, as we have spoken earlier, the actual training happens on a training service now instance. So now the status says waiting for training. So we'll just wait until some job at service now picks this up and starts to train. Thirty percent. So now that it is hundred percent, let's take a look at what the solution looks like. So this is our solution. As you can see, it says the solution precision is 56%, solution recall is 46%, and solution coverage is 84%. So <clears throat> let's try to understand what each of these values mean. So at this level, we may want to wear our data scientist hat. And before we even look into a solution, we would want to make sure that we really understand what precision recall coverage really means. I would link to a page that gives you really good understanding on these concepts. But precision, as you see it above also, is the estimated percentage of predictions that will be correct, which really means what portion of positive identifications was actually correct, right? So how many of the counts that were predicted by the solution were correct. Solution recall means what portion of actual positives were identified correctly <clears throat> because there will be uh, false negatives as well. So, so of all the uh, true positive and false negatives that really exist, how many of them were identified correctly by the solution and coverage simply means of all the records that were present, how many of them did it try to make a prediction on? Because there will definitely be some records <coughs> which it will not be able to identify because it's not able to find uh, a co correlation between them. You know, and that's why we tend to say, hey, that you know, we want to have some sort of a loose connection between uh, the inputs and the outputs. So the other tab is test solution, which means I can provide my inputs on short description and configuration item and it will give me a result. So let's try this out really quick. So I could say password unlock configuration item can be let's say SAP. Let's see if it gives us anything. So it did give us a result, right? If I change the top end to five, it would give me five different assignment groups that make 
most sense to it so similarly I can try something like email not working and configuration item I can give Outlook if I run test it will list me all the assignment groups with their confidence level that when I provide these inputs this could be uh, the possible team that would be working on it uh, confidence is also interesting to see because it thinks there's only it's confident on a scale of 1 to 100 it's 23 percent confident that you know, this is the team that is going to work so when we are designing our solutions we would have to understand if this is actually the team that's working on it and if it's not then we don't want to make wrong predictions and confuse the team we would want to tweak or fine-tune our solution go back look at the data again look at the historic data again create the vocabulary and then run our iterations just to see whether we are trying to get or we get the right prediction here when I do a batch test I can choose multiple fields from the table and I can run my test let's talk about solution visualization so solution visualization gives us a more visual view of all our outputs our outputs our assignment group right also termed as classes so it gives a visual output of all our classes as to how the how the different classes fare out on a chart and the chart is based on estimated precision versus estimated recall the size of the bubble really denotes the distribution which means how many in this case how many assignment groups or how many outputs constitute or uh, are a part of the overall solution so the bigger the size would mean that there are more number of assignment groups available for it and this is a dynamic chart so which means I can choose to see only limited classes or more classes so the smaller bubbles would denote that the the number of uh, assignment group records are less as compared to the overall class selection right uh, if you see this big bubble on the left hand side it's small on estimated recall would tell you that the, the the prediction that was done for this particular class or this particular assignment group there's actually a very less chance that we get it correct whereby on the right hand side as you would obviously note it that the for for these guys there's a, a good really good chance that we we are able to predict it correctly so at least we would know that for this particular block right here there's a really good chance that we can uh, that we are able to predict it correctly and uh, if you would notice it would show you the assignment groups at the bottom as well this you would see a list of all the classes a list of all the assignment groups that are available next tab shows you solution definition which is really what was our solution definition configuration record same thing notice we also see exclude classes which are the classes in our case the output the assignment group for which we were not able to make a prediction correctly because there is not enough correlation that exists very cool so we see that on the basis of testing our solution and solution visualization we can actually see if what we are trying to predict if it's coming out correctly if, if our prediction is correct if it's not correct then we will have to go look at the data maybe not consider the hundred thousand records that were taken as part of this example but lower our data set uh, add more filters to see if we can get a more refined reliable and clean data we will run this uh, run the learning job again we will try to see the results again if we are satisfied with the result because hey we are only trying to make a prediction a hundred percent prediction will be I would say too good to be true because there are always some outliers but yeah if we see a good satisfying result then definitely we can we can add a frequency to our jobs so yeah that that was all about clustering hope this video helps you if there's anything else that you would like to see, please feel free to comment and I will try to help you. Thank you. Have a good day ahead.